Today we are back at PH Dogs in Riverside, California with one of my favorite trainers, professional dog trainer, Bethany Perdome, and she's letting you peek inside of her dog training class where they are focusing on accomplishing the AKC Canine Good Citizen Test. Let's go ahead and get started. So has everybody had a chance to look at what the 10 items for the Canine Good Citizen certificate are? No? Okay. So the Canine Good Citizen Certificate is actually an AKC title. It was designed as a temperament test a while back um, to show that your dog has good obedience and is social and controllable around people and other dogs. So the first item of the CGC, and we're gonna go through them kind of one through 10. We may not get through all 10 items today, um, but I'm going to explain them and we're gonna start to walk through them, okay? So the first exercise is greeting a, strength, a friendly person, okay? So if I have my dog, imaginary dog, I'm gonna say hi to imaginary person, I'm going to walk up with my dog. Hi, how are you? Nice to meet you. That's number one, that's it. So what you're looking for is you're looking for the dog to not go hi and jump all over the person, to not growl, not be aggressive, and to stay under control, okay? So number one is just greeting a friendly person. You're walking up and saying hi to a person without the dog jumping or acting aggressive, okay? You can talk to the dog the entire test. You're not allowed, during the test, you're not allowed to do leash pops or big corrections. You're not allowed to reward the dog, but you can use your voice and you can use your commands. So for the number one, what I normally do is I walk up. My priority is going to be my dog, not the person. So as I walk up, I'm gonna ignore the person, tell my dog to sit, good. Now I'm gonna say hi to the person. So your dog being under control is number one, okay? So you're not even gonna say hi to the person until your dog is in a sit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around and I have some other volunteers I'm gonna make get to work and we're going to walk up and you're going to have your dog sit, okay? And to start, we're going to keep maybe four to six feet so that way your dog can't even jump on us. So it's just going to be a person approaches, you have your dog sit, reward them for sitting and then we're gonna back away. And then we're gonna walk up, have our dog sit and then walk away. Okay, so if they're on the cot, go ahead and get off the cot. So I'm, I'm gonna show you with this dog right here so you'll see what it looks like. So we're gonna go ahead and walk up. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and walk up. Just take two steps forward and then have them sit. Stop and sit. Sit. Good, reward. Good, and then I'm gonna go ahead and back up and then you can just walk towards me again. So I'm gonna keep myself really calm and boring to start. Hi, how are you? Good. Good. And then back up, go ahead and walk towards me again. Hello. Good. So uh, in class, it's easy because we have designated people that are going to come around and help you. How you can practice this out on a walk is ask people for the time. Hide your watch, put your phone in your pocket. When you see somebody, excuse me, do you know what time it is? Sit. Thank you so much. So by asking them what time it is, you're getting their focus off of your dog and onto something else. And so that where your dog will go, hi puppy, right? And make your dog all crazy. So when you ask them what time it is, you're giving them something to do. You're taking their focus off of your dog and onto something else. Again, hide your watch or else they think that you're really weird, but you can ask them how, you know, do you know where the Smiths live? Do you know how to get the grocery store? You know, you, could, you don't have to ask them what time it is, but just some way to get people to stop, to give you enough time to get that sit in and then thank you and you keep walking. So that's an easy way to practice at home um, when you don't have a person to just get those reps in, okay? So um, my volunteers and I are gonna come around and help you. If you need to keep this far apart for your dog to stay focused, that's fine. Today's class one, okay? We will get closer, we will get better, but we want your dog to be successful. So if I walk all the way up, all right, I'm gonna be rude. If I walk all the way up here, hi, right? And then he's jumping on me or he can't focus on the sit, I'm setting him up to fail. Right, so we want to try to set the dog up where they're at a distance that they can be successful, okay? Now, how are we gonna get our dogs to sit? Some dogs don't care about your food. They're like, that, there's a person and that's all that I want. In that situation, we're going to teach them with leash pressure. And what is leash pressure? Leash pressure is where we are going to gently pull up on the leash and as soon as their butt hits the ground, we're gonna relax our leash and give them a treat, okay? So um, I'm gonna show you with Mr. Blue here. Hi, big boy. Okay, so watch, I'm not gonna pull on him hard. I'm just gonna pull up steady. And the second his butt hits the ground, I relax my leash. I'm gonna show you again over here. So I walk, I'm just gonna pull up on the leash. As soon as I know, pull up on the leash. Yes, relax, give him a treat. And you notice he threw a little fit there, that's fine. Pull up, good, that was much faster there. Pull up, 
as soon as that bites the ground, relax that leash, okay? So when he's sitting, if I keep pulling on him, I'm not giving him the information that the sit is what I want. So if you can use food if you want, but sometimes the dog goes, I don't care about your food, person. That's all I want. And this is our way of going, well, yeah, you have to. You still have to sit when you'd rather play with that dog and even if you'd rather go see that person. So just steady tension up. Second as butt hits the ground, I relax my leash. Practice this as we're going around with the people, okay? Pull her closer to you. There you go. Then go ahead and walk towards me. Okay, and then just pull up, gentle. As soon as she sits, relax. There you go. Good. Will she eat the food? Yeah. Okay. So if your dog sits and then they get up, you're just going to help them again. And as soon as they sit, relax your leash. So try to give her the treat while she's in that sit. So pull up. A little bit more, a little more. Nope, so just pull up for now. So if you hold the leash, there you go, relax your leash. So as soon as she sits, you have to relax right away. Okay, go ahead and kind of walk her out of position. Try that again. Watch her leg. I think she's tangled. So when you're doing this, you want to hold cl as close to the dog's collar to help them. If you hold it at, you know, two feet up, to get them to sit, I have to raise my hand this high. There you go, perfect. So as soon as they sit, relax that leash. Good, relax, perfect. Okay, now go ahead and try. So walk towards me. Pull up. Good, relax. I'll do that again, walk towards me. Good. So another reason why we're not saying sit right now is because if I'm talking to somebody and my dog gets up, I don't wanna go, excuse me, Luna sit. I want to just be able to pull up and have her understand that, that means sit. So while we're working on teaching it, we're not saying sit. We're just pulling up and as soon as the butt, dog's butt hits the ground, relax the leash, give him a treat. So this is going to be a non-verbal command. So they understand that when you pull up on the leash, that means sit. Go ahead and walk up. We'll try one more time. Yes. Perfect. Good. So again, if you need to stop farther back, stop farther back. Yep. We want to try to set them up to be successful. So just reset. So just do a circle around and go ahead and come back. There you go. Yes, there you go. Go ahead and walk up again. And pull up. So the collar that you have, because it's so loose, the, the higher up on the neck, the more sensitive that they are. Because this drops down so low, it's almost like a harness where she can really pull. Um, with her, because she's so used to just dragging through it, um, I would maybe put her on a prong collar, just because she's so, you can see she's so used to dragging through it. It would allow you to use less pressure to get the same result. So for today, it's fine, but at the end of class, if you want to try a prong to see how she does, we can do that. Okay. I think Alexis has one of those. Too. Okay. Yes. There you go. Hello. Yes, there you go. Go ahead and walk up again. <laughs> Not those. Because it might taste better off the ground, I don't know. Yes, there you go. Good, we'll do one more. There you go, perfect. Good. All right, so go ahead and do a little walk up and just have her sit. Good. So if you hold it a little bit shorter, you won't have to lift your hand up as high. So we don't want to, we want to have that steady tension, but we don't want to be physically lifting them off the ground. So go ahead and walk up again. Good, go ahead and stop right there. So see how you're lifting her off the ground? So don't lift her off the ground. Yep, just steady tension up a little bit more. And if you have to, so like she's not, she doesn't know what to do with it yet. Right. So you can pull and lure with the food at the same time. Okay. So pull up. Yes, there you go. So try just a couple times pulling up for the sit to start. So see how, how high, there you go, good, reward her. So if you hold it a little bit closer, then you don't have to pull your hand as high. 
Okay, let's go ahead and walk up again. So once you start pulling, see how you're kind of relaxing it? Yeah. Let me see here real quick. Good, reward. Let me see a couple treats. So with her, she likes to play, right? So as soon as she sits too, I, yes, I can kind of jump out and let her get the ants out of her pants and kind of play with her a little bit. But once I start pulling, and you see even when she puts on the brakes, I just kind of keep that steady tension and it's who's more stubborn. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna give up, so you might as well give in, okay? But if you don't mean it, don't start pulling. No freebies. So as soon as she sits, make sure you relax your leash as soon as her butt hits the ground. All right, so for the canine good citizen, that's gonna be number one. Okay, the walking up, saying hi to person. The second part, we're building off of that, but we're gonna add petting, okay? So the first part is, hi, how are you? Nice to meet you. That's number one, okay? Number two is, may I pet your dog? And the dogs need to be comfortable being pet. Um, if the dogs are not comfortable being pet, or if they are too excited, we're gonna desensitize them to that reaching, okay? So at first, let's use Miss Luna. So we're gonna walk up, go ahead and walk up, and you're gonna have her sit. Good. So I can just do this, and you can reward her for staying. Okay. So if actual touching keeps, wah, right, the dog loses their mind, I'm gonna break it down a little baby steps where the dog's gonna be successful, okay? So I can walk up, do this. She's comfortable with that, I can touch her. He can reward. If she gets up, he's just gonna help her sit again. And if she starts putting paws on me, I can back away and he can help her sit. <laughs> Hot dog. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go around and we're gonna do the number two. So it's gonna be a built on number one. So we're gonna walk up. Hi, how are you? If your dog is comfortable with it, we can shake hands. If not, we can just kind of do that movement for number one. And then number two is, can I pet your dog? And again, if at first it's just this, not even making contact, or just walking up, staying three feet away and doing this, we're gonna do that. We're gonna just step by step work the dogs through it. And on this one too, we're, now that all the dogs are giving into that leash pressure, now we're gonna say the word, okay? So when you walk up, have your dog sit. If they don't sit, that's where you're gonna follow through with your leash, okay? If they sit on their own, we're just gonna reward them for that, okay? So we're still gonna babysit, reward every little step along the way. It seems very, an easy exercise walking up and saying hi and having somebody pet your dog, but for a lot of these dogs are like, Wah! like they're just so excited. So we wanna try, or they're nervous or whatever. So we wanna try to break it up into little pieces that they can be successful with. So let's try it over here. Hi, so again, your focus is your dog. So if they get up, just have them sit. And again, if, if this is too much for him, I can just do this part. Good. And you can reward him for staying. Good boy. All right. May I pet your dog? Okay. So again, I can test with this. If he gets up, she can help him sit. You go ahead and reward him for staying with this. So if he gets up, I'm just going to back away. He gets up, I back up. Now mistakes are part of learning. So a lot of people want to hold their dog back to stop them from making that mistake. That mistake is part of learning. So allow your dog to make the mistake of getting up, but be prepared to correct them and put them back. So I want to give them enough leash that if they want to get up, they can, but I want to make sure as soon as they get that one step in, I'm stopping the leash and telling them how to be right. Hello, how are you? Nope. nope, he gets up, I back up. Hello. Good, reward. So like with him, because he's so excitable, I wouldn't even get to the touching part, right? We want to try to set the dogs up to be successful. So don't put them in a situation where you're asking them to do more than they're capable of. We want to build them up. All right, you want to walk up with him? Okay, have him sit. 
So now again, we're going to say the word before we pull on them. So we're going to say sit and then we can follow through with our leash. Oh, hello, how are you? Good. May I pet your dog? So with him, because he's sitting, I would just take a step forward and have him, I say, because he laid down, just take a step forward and have him sit again. Sit. Sit. Good. Hi, what a nice dog. Good, reward him. So if you, unless you told him to get up, make him sit again. Sit. No, sit. So just pull up again. Sit. Good, relax. Go ahead and walk up. We'll try it again. Sit. Good. How are you? May I pet your dog? Hi. Good. No, sit. sit. Good. So if he makes a mistake, I don't give him a treat for it. So if he does it right, reward him. But I don't want him to learn, get up, sit down, get a treat. Get up, sit down, get a treat. Or else that's what he's going to do. So go ahead and have him sit again. Relax your leash. See how it's tight? There you go. Good. Now reward him. Nope. Pull up. Sit. Sit. Good. So no treat. You can tell him that he's being good. <laughs> Just use your leash. <laughs> Look at my hand. Sit. Good. Good. Reward him. There you go. Perfect. We got one. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Hi. How are you? May I pet your dog? Yes. So again, pause. I back up. So if I keep petting, then this turns into this, which turns into jumping. So no, not even the one paw. Good. Reward. Yep. Yeah, because if she does the paws and you pet her, you're giving her mixed signals. So when we're talking about jumping, usually dogs jump because it's somehow getting reinforced. And it's not how you think you're reinforcing it, it's how does the dog find it reinforcing. So if the dog jumps up on me and I go, no, off, and I push them, the dog wanted attention, I just talked to them, touched them, and gave them that attention. So why wouldn't they jump up? Even if it's not positive attention, it's still attention. Just like the kids that are, you know, poking their brother, hey, they're just trying to get a reaction. So even if you're going, no, off, and you, you're speaking English, the dogs don't speak English, they view things through consequences. So if the consequence of jumping up is that you grab them, you push them, you, why wouldn't they do it? It's a really fun game. With her too, like with the barking when she gets up and you, nope, you interrupted, that's perfect. It's just, you wanna make sure you're not reinforcing. If she howls and then you pet her or she does her woo woo, right? And then you let her get up, then she's learning to vocalize to, to do what she wants. So just interrupt it, have her sit. And when she's being calm, that's how you get to go say hi to people. Hello. Hi, how are you? So there you go. Sit. Good. Good boy. Perfect. Good. All right, so that's number one and number two. Number three, is grooming and appearance, okay? So for number three, the, per the evaluator is going to pet your dog over the body, run a brush over your dog, and they have to pick up the front feet. A lot of dogs don't like their feet being touched, okay? If your dog does not like their feet being touched, then what I normally do is I teach them to shake. So if it's their idea, it's usually a good idea. So what we can do with that, does anybody's dog know how to shake? Okay, see if you can get them to shake. So if it's a, just a trick for the dogs, there's no stress of the strangers coming, invading my space and touching me, right? So you can teach them, instead of saying the word, if you just reach for their paw and when they offer it, you mark it, then when you get to the day of the test and I go to reach for them, they just offer it. And when I reach for the other one, they just offer it. Well, now it's just a game. So now I'm not reaching and touching their feet, they're offering that behavior. And if they're offering it, then it's, they're usually more comfortable with it. To get them comfortable, you also want to make sure you can touch your dog's feet. We're going to have everybody, you can just use your cell phone as a fake brush and you're just going to touch them with your with your phone, okay? If your dog is not comfortable and will not stand still for you to rub your phone on them, again, good luck with a brush, good luck with a stranger, good luck adding on to it. So when we're doing the pause, if I walk up, can, I mean, one of you come be a volunteer. So if I'm talking to you and I just go like this, right? That's really weird. She's like, what are you doing, right? I mean, they're gonna get kicked and I, I, she's not gonna kick me, but if I was a stranger on the street and you just go grab somebody's toes, they're gonna be like, whoa, right? And they're gonna push you. That's the same with the dog. So when we're doing the touching of the toes, we're not just gonna grab the bottom of their feet, right? That's kind of rude. So if I said, can I see, and I'm gonna touch you, are you okay with that? Okay, can I see your foot? Mm -hmm. Okay. 
See the difference? So I just gave her a rub down, but I'm gonna do the same thing with the dog. So I'm gonna start on their shoulder, and just like if you were doing a horse, you do the same way. So we're gonna start high, go low, and then we're gonna pick up the foot, okay? As soon as you pick up the foot, yes, give them a treat, give them back their foot, okay? So go ahead and try that. So you're just picking up the foot, giving them a treat. Do that on both the feet. Okay, so picking up right foot, just the front feet, just picking up right foot, picking up left foot, and we're fake brushing them with our foams. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna work on picking up the front feet. So start the shoulder, just kind of pet, work your way down, pick up the foot, give her a treat and give her back her foot. And just do that on both feet, see if she's comfortable with you touching her. And then you're just gonna fake brushing her with your cell phone. Because the number three for the canine good citizen is somebody's going to brush her and they have to pick up her front feet. So we're just using our cell phones as a fake brush. Okay. So um, the next exercise, and, and it's not always in this order, but this is what we're gonna do. There's a sit, down, stay, and then a recall. And that's like several of the items. So the dog has to do a sit, they have to do a down. It's your choice what you leave them in for the stay. Then you're gonna walk 20 feet away, come back to 10 feet, and recall the dog. So what it looks like, this is how I normally have it set up. I've got my three cones over here. So it would be leaving the dog, sit, down, whatever you wanna leave them at, at the first cone. Then you'd walk to the blue cone, come back to the middle cone, and recall. Does anybody think their dog would do that now? Okay, let's see, Marley. Again, these are goals for the end of the class. I don't, if you all know how to do it, you don't really need me, so I expect you to need help. So go to the, yep, so sit or down, blue, and then back to the orange and recall. No, sorry, you're gonna stay at the first cone. You're gonna stay, you're gonna leave him at that first cone. And then you're gonna go to the orange cone, the, I'm sorry, the blue cone. I don't know my colors. And then you're gonna go back to the orange cone and now recall. Good. Try one more time and this time do a down. See if he'll do a down for you. Perfect, and that's what it looks like, okay? So the whole time you can have your dog, you can do a sit, a hand signal for the sit, you can do a hand signal for the down. The whole time you're doing stay, you can go stay, 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 don't move down, stay. That's okay for the test. I'm not saying that that is a good thing, but you, you could do that for the test. The only thing that you can't do is like give the dog any treats or give him any leash pop, okay? So you could talk to the dog the whole time. So what we're gonna do to start is we're gonna work these things separately. So just to warm up the dogs, we're gonna do some sits and some downs. If you need help teaching your dog to sit or down, raise your hand, I'll come by. And then we're gonna work on stay, okay? You can, this side, you can have your dog stay on their cot. This side, you're gonna have your dog stay at your cone. When we're doing our stays, we wanna work on duration first. When we're teaching this, we're not gonna be able to walk across the field the first try, right? So the first thing that we're gonna do is just have our dog do a sit stay, okay? So we're gonna have them sit, step right in front of them, no distance, and we're gonna tell them stay. Wait five seconds and then break, and you can let them up. Sit, stay, 10 seconds, reward them, break, and let them up. And we're gonna build it up. Once you can get one minute for one treat, then we can start to add some distraction, okay? So if you think you can get one minute for one treat, raise your hand, I'll come give you the next step. But right now, your, your goal is gonna be your choice, sit or down, and hold that position for one minute. If you leave them in a sit, they have to stay in a sit. If you put them in a down, they have to stay in the down, okay? So your choice, sit or down, and then tell them to stay. One minute, one treat. If you need to reward more often to start, do it. Break your dog more often, reward them more often, but that's gonna be your goal. One minute, one treat. Yes. So we're gonna work on doing a stay for one minute. That's gonna be your goal. The word does not matter. The consistency is what is important. So I use break. Uh, I don't use okay because I say okay way too often. Okay, yeah, I'll be right there. There goes my dog. So I use break. I don't say break very often. 
I don't get breaks very often. Um, so you're gonna say, once your dog is good, you're gonna reward them in position and then break, and there's no reward for the break. They already wanna be free. They already don't want to stay. So we need to give them that extra bonus in position, and then they get to be free. But I'm not gonna reward them for that break. When you're at home practicing, pick your battles. Don't start your day with trying to do a 10 minute down stay when your dog is full of energy, right? Do it after a walk, do it after they've played, do it after they've gone to the bathroom, and then we can start working on our calm behaviors. Eventually we'll get to the point where we can have them do a stay even when they are super excited. But while we're teaching, we wanna kinda pick our battles and do it when the dog is more calm. If your dog keeps failing, you need to make it easier. If your dog is making mistake after mistake after mistake and say you're trying to get to 10 seconds for one treat, go back to eight seconds. Try to catch them when they're being right before they go wrong. It's a long class, the class is almost done. Yeah, so that's a good point. So if your puppy or your dog is done, that's normal. It's very difficult even for me to focus for a full hour on something. We all need breaks. So when you're at home and you're training, train like 10 minutes max at a time. If you can designate you know, 15, 20 minutes a day to work your dog, it's better to do two 10 minute lessons or three five minute lessons than one 15 minute lesson. So if you can kind of spread it throughout the day, that's ideal. And it doesn't have to be like, we're gonna do a formal training lesson. It can be do a sit stay, I do my one minute stay, and I let them out in the backyard to go chase squirrels. That's even more rewarding than food, right? Or I'm gonna have my dog do a sit stay while I open that slider and I make them wait before I let them come in the house. Or I make them do a sit stay while I put down their food bowl and I wait, break, okay, now you get to go have it. Most of the time, 80% of the time, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna reward my dog in position. This is going to help reward stability. I'm not gonna reward them out. If I reward them, to something, reward them to go outside, reward them to their food bowl. If I do that most of the time, when my dogs are in the stay, they're gonna have ants in their pants and they're ready to go because they think forward. I want my dog to know I stay is the best thing in the world because I sit here and everything good comes to me. So why would I get up? We want to reward laziness here. Does anybody have questions about anything that we did today? Yep. It's a husky. Get a golden. You can minimize it. You're never gonna get rid of it you can minimize it by again making sure that you're not rewarding it. So if she howls and then you pet her, you're rewarding that. If she barks in the backyard and then you let her inside, she's gonna, you're rewarding that. So just be aware of that. Um, if she like, if she's excited, do a down stay. A lot of times, and Huskies still will howl while they're in a down, but a lot of times having them do something calm, it kind of helps them keep their brain in their head and it'll help interrupt that. Um, but Genetics definitely matter. If you have a Malinois, it will likely bite. If you have a Husky, it will likely howl. If you have a Lab, it will likely retrieve things. Try to use that where you want it. Play retrieve games with them. Go out and when it's five o'clock in the neighborhood, piss off your neighbor and howl with your dog and then go inside and tell them to be quiet so you can go back to bed for you've woken up the neighborhood. So homework is going to be um, doing this sits while you say hi to people. Again, easiest way is to ask people what time it is. So another exercise for the CGT that you can do the same thing with is um, there's an exercise where you're greeting a friendly dog. The dogs are not actually saying hi. So it would be the same thing like we did with the person, but it's gonna be with the dog, but even more space. So the dog is gonna be here. Again, imaginary dog, we walk up, I have my dog sit, hi, how are you? Have a good day, and we walk by. The dogs are not saying hi. So again, if you see somebody who has a well-behaved dog out on a hiking trail, ask them what time it is. Have your dog sit. Use that as a training situation. Pick your battles. If I see somebody walking their dog like this, I'm probably not gonna ask that person what time it is. I'm gonna pull over and let them go out of control with their out of control dog, let them go by. If I see somebody that has their dog under control and I think that I could probably use it and they're not gonna let their dog come and say hi, that's where I'll stop, sit, hey, excuse me, do you know what time it is? Perfect, thank you so much. So you can have people help you training without even asking them. You can also ask people, but you, you get more reps than if you just ask random people what time it is. Um, you can also practice like outside of the grocery store, have your dog do a sit stay. You get a lot of people that are walking by that will not say hi to your dog. They're usually pushing carts, they're usually carrying stuff. So you can get, if you have a very excited dog or if you have a nervous dog, you can practice a lot of people walking by without any kind of confrontation or without any excitement. So that's a good place to practice. And I don't see a lot of dogs hanging outside of grocery stores. So you don't have to worry about the dogs 
outside of that distraction. So homework is going to be name response. If you can't get their attention, good luck doing anything else. So name feed, name feed, name feed. The sits, the downs, the stays. And the, the main thing is those first things, feet being touched. If you don't know what the Canine Good Citizen test is, you can go online, search AKC CGC, and it'll pop up with the 10 items. If you have any questions about the specific ones, I can go over them with you, but we're gonna go through all those 10 items, and hopefully, for those who want to, we'll do the test at the end of the class, at the end of the five weeks, okay? Questions? I don't bite. If you have questions after class, come see me. I'll be happy to answer your questions, and if not, I'll see you all next week, same time. Thank you. Thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. And if you're training at home, tag me, at Nate Schilmer. I'd love to see the progress that you're making with your puppy. Thanks again. We'll see you guys in the next one.